Hi, I'm Phaedra Kress, Executive Editor of the Aesthetic Surgery Journal, and today I'd like to speak directly to President Eugenio Gandolfi and all of the members of the Italian Association for Aesthetic Plastic Surgery. We were asked to put a brief video together that would be helpful for members of the Italian Society during the submission process. So myself, together with Editorial Manager Hunter Alexander, have prepared the upcoming video for you that you're about to see, and it offers tips and tricks and guidelines and suggestions that will help prepare your manuscript for submission to the journal. We hope you enjoy the video. We're available to you 24-7. You can contact us at journalatsurgery.org or me personally at phaedraatsurgery.org. We thank you for your support. We thank you for reading the Aesthetic Surgery Journal cover to cover. And we look forward to many new submissions from your members. Thank you, as always, on behalf of Dr. Nahai, for all of your support of the Aesthetic Surgery Journal. Hi, I'm Phaedra Kress, Executive Editor of the Aesthetic Surgery Journal, and I'm here today with my colleague Hunter Alexander, who is the Editorial Manager of the Journal. We're here today to talk to you about some of the trials and tribulations of peer review, what you can do to improve your manuscript for submission, and even throughout the actual peer review process. Yes, after an article undergoes peer review, it comes to me to formulate the decision letter, and Phaedra and I have recently noticed that many of the same formatting points are being returned to the author, so we thought it'd be helpful to go through some of the points we've been repeating in many of our decision letters to get it out there what we are expecting authors to have in their article outside of the um, scientific content, which is judged by the reviewers and editors. So starting with the method section, first we need to find out how the patients were chosen for the study. Were they consecutive or were uh, inclusion-exclusion criteria utilized? Was any form of randomization utilized? If so, you need to describe how the patients were randomized into X number of groups. Was a computer program used? Was a uh, spreadsheet? Was it Microsoft Excel? What type of randomization? That needs to be clarified in the method section. Was the study IRB approved? If not, was informed written consent provided by all the patients? Was the Declaration of Helsinki guidelines followed? Was patient satisfaction assessed in any way? If so, did you use a validated survey? Was an interview format used? Who conducted the interview? Was it done phone call, email, snail mail? Were the patients anonymously contacted or did they identify themselves in any way? We basically need to find out how the study was conducted in the method section and when it was conducted. What was the date range of the study? Moving to the results section, then we get into patient demographics. Number of males, females in the study, age range, mean age, if BMI is relevant in any way to the study, mean BMI, BMI range, and then if any sort of satisfaction assessment was conducted, this is where you'd put the results of that. It's usually helpful to put that in tabular form as a table. If not, describe them in the text. Moving then to the discussion, we need to find out how this study enhances the literature on the topic. What's the importance of the study? And then also, just as important, what are some of the limitations? What would you do differently if you had to do the study again in the future? What are the implications for future research? Then we wrap up with a conclusion section, which should be pretty brief. Basically, you're putting the take-home points here, a brief summary of the study, and summarize your points. So then that goes through a few bullet points of what should and should not be in each section. There's some, a few other elements that are required for papers to be published in ASJ. If a patient is recognizable in any way, not only a facial photo or a photo of someone's eyes, we're going to need a signed consent form. And that includes if a patient has a recognizable tattoos, if he or she is wearing jewelry that could be recognized, birthmarks, anything like that. The figure legend, we need a detailed description of all the photos, not just pre-post photos, also interop the patient's age, gender, the procedure he or she underwent, and then also the follow-up time, when were the post-ops taken. All that info needs to be in the figure legend. And then, if possible, it's really helpful to provide a technique video. After reading your article, a reader should be able to reproduce the technique in his or her clinic. So the inclusion of a technique video is really, really helpful, and our readers do appreciate it. Technique videos should include English, either subtitles or narration. We prefer narration, but if that's not possible, by all means, include English language subtitles on your video. So that covers a lot of points. I hope that wasn't too much. What should be in each section, and then a few other elements to really enhance the quality of your article and increase the likelihood of publication. 
Well, Hunter, you bring up a good point about the images, and this is something that sometimes I think authors struggle with. One example that we kind of see is we'll see pre and post op images with different color backgrounds or different shades of blue. Can you give any other tips about how they might be able to manipulate the images themselves or you know, help with the backgrounds or some of the sizing or cropping issues that we see during submission? Sure. Image standardization is very important. It's ideal for images to have the, you know, be taken in the same location. That way they would feature the same backgrounds. They should be cropped similarly. If a patient's pre-ops are from here down, it would make no sense for the post-ops to be here down. So that way on the page they'd be aligned. So standardized cropping, backgrounds, lighting is very important. The distance at which the photos were taken. And then also high quality artwork, illustrations, anything that would enhance the quality of your paper, make it easier for a reader to then take the technique or um, tips, tricks you're describing, and implement that in his or her practice. I think also that there's been an evolution in what the expectation is in, in aesthetic surgery for how these images are presented. Right. If you were to look back through the pages of ASJ 5, 10, 15 years ago, you'd probably see more clothing, you'd see more gowns. So, uh, you know, we're evolving and we do encourage you to put your best foot forward, as Hunter said. So another component of medical publishing that we really encourage you to be an active participant in and to be aware of and continue to educate as we do ourselves is the importance of publication ethics. And this ranges from plagiarism, redundant publication, dual submissions. When you submit a manuscript to ASJ, you check mark a box that says, I testify this article hasn't been submitted anywhere else. And we take that very seriously. We follow and subscribe very closely to the WAMI and the COPE Committee on Publication Ethics guidelines. And uh, these are the guiding forces within the realm of aesthetic surgery publication uh, in terms of publication ethics. So this is really important. There are significant rules about co-authorship, for example, what constitutes a co-author. Sometimes we'll be asked a question such as, can I have dual co-authorship? And so some of these things are coming up as all of this evolves. So we caution you to be specific in particular about paying close attention to this. If you're an ASJ reviewer and you see something that looks familiar, you know, see something, say something, let us know, bring it to my attention or Hunter's attention. If you have that kind of inkling that maybe you've read this before or reviewed it before, chances are you're probably right and we need to be aware of that so we don't end up having to do a retraction because the article's already been published somewhere else. Right, and I would, uh, just to uh, add on to that, it may seem like common knowledge to you as an author because you're an expert on what you're writing about, but all statements in, the, in your manuscript should be supported by citations from the literature, even if it seems like something that's well known. It's better to oversight than undersight, I would say, uh, just to make sure that all the bases are covered. So um, anytime that a statement is made that depends on previous literature, it should be cited in, reference, in the reference section of your paper. Now, another component that we deal with often is the submissions that we get from international authors. And I feel like international authors have a few more challenges than uh, native English speakers and American authors just having to do with the language. So one step that you can take to help improve your article is to seek out the counsel of a native English speaker and or to have your article professionally copy edited before submission. And I think that this will help streamline the process. I was speaking with a doctor just yesterday who said, sometimes I just can't get past the bad language and the poor grammar. And so to help you improve your article and get through those hurdles of peer review, which are rigorous, we'll admit, give yourself a better chance by presenting your, your text as clearly and succinctly as possible in as best English and grammar as you possibly can. Um, having correct syntax, following the format that's outlined in the instructions to authors, which are available on the ASJ website, all of this will help give you a leg up and help your, your paper go through peer review and hopefully come out with a positive result. And then something else we wanted to speak to you today about is social media. And you've probably heard, if you've spoken with Hunter and I before, the importance of social media. Discoverability of your article is really important, especially for the international and global community. So when articles are published in the Aesthetic Surgery Journal, we do our best to tweet many of the articles, to put the links on Facebook, to help drive the eyeball, so to speak, to your content and your research, which ultimately will help 
improve the medical literature and improve patient care and outcomes and safety as well. So we encourage you, like we do, to tweet your article when it's published, to share it with your friends and on Facebook and other social media outlets because that enables you to have a wider, more global audience for your research. Totally agree. Again, it's not about self-promotion. It's about getting your work out to the public. The lay public probably isn't going to have access to a medical journal, but if they can find the abstract, if you send it out via Twitter or Facebook, they may purchase the article and enhance their knowledge. So don't be shy about tweeting or putting your article on Facebook, Instagram, or whatever service you prefer. Exactly. And what you'll see as a result of that is articles will start to garner an altmetric score, and that's essentially the societal impact or, or reaction to your work. So much like impact factor is the gold standard by which a journal and even an article is measured with citations, altmetric, which is about five-year-old technology now, is measuring the eyeballs and the tweets and the blog posts, etc. So it's important to, to, you know, like we do, stay on this cutting edge, be aware of altmetrics, and check your articles. When you publish an article with us, you can go to the information and metrics link and you can find out, is your article a 2, a 10, a 15, a 500? So it, it's important for you to be aware of that and know that there's technology and, and services like this available, uh, readily available to you on the website. So thank you for your attention and time. Again, if you ever have questions for myself or Hunter or Dr. Nahai, um, we're more than happy to, to answer you 24 seven as, the, as the hashtag says. So um, we thank you for your support of the journal. Thank you very much.